Okay, well, I'm continuing on from my other recordings uh, somewhat. Um, it, it, it has been very helpful to me because, you know, um, coming across... I mean, this was called. It was a, this was a bit of the phase of my research that I'm basically in now, where I've I've got a lay of the land of all the structures, but it's actually just sort of uh, correlating them to uh, you know sort of full manifestations, uh, or or because uh, my models are so intricate and there are so many of them and, and things like that, and and just trying to sort of. Uh, because I mean, you know, I, I certainly have a lot of stock in them, uh, but in terms of uh, corresponding them to phenomena, uh, you know, that, that, that's you know, which is a you know, I've done a lot of theoretical integration. Now it's important to try to uh, find out uh, how to diagnose these things. You know, so I'm, I'm somewhat. You could say uh, delving into the the almost the clinical um, psychometric kind of of, of correspondence uh, and 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 trying to work out how to uh, see how these things manifest and I I'm I'm still giving a lot because you know I mean I I make a lot of technical points which I don't fully render in terms of all the implications of those things I don't you know I'm saying them as technical. I'm I'm iterating, you know, all the facets and and uh, uh, implications, but I I, you know, often don't come across embodied examples of these things, and so you know, making that that correspondence then helps me sort of give flesh to my own models, and to, uh, I mean, what what w- one of the problems with my theories and models is. Um, that they're just so vast and detailed that uh, I have not tried to, you know, I don't understand other metatypes as well as I understand my own metatype. But I, I know the type of, I, I mean, I know roughly how all the structures, you know, are, 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 uh, come together from a theoretical uh, point of view, but but I haven't seen how all those facets cross pollinate into you know particular permutation, and and so uh, you know there's a there's a there's a feel and there's a dynamism that I probably have intuitively, but I don't. Um, it's not that well anchored in uh, uh, you know like oh well a metatype twelve is going to have these species of presentation or a metatype. Nine is 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 going to have have these kinds of facets and and they're also sort of peculiar intersections because of the alchemical master formula of 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 and 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 the particular eccentricities that the emotional tones themselves uh, in terms of of in terms of how they are employed by uh, the metatype uh, uh, four sides of the mind structure is going to have a peculiar cross pollination that can't that that doesn't lend itself to systematization except to see where the all the peculiar um, intersections lead uh, uh, in 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 terms of what's going on in terms of those particular species of false ego complex, but anyway, um, so I think that some uh, so you know and the, the more that I understand more of my own models. I think the easier it is for me to um, correspond it to the scripture as well. And I think that what I've called the identity complex is, I think, uh, the identity complex within the false ego complex is, I think, what spirit is. Because I I do think that the spirit is the understanding, and the understanding is fundamentally founded in the subconscious, in the, the belief structure, the perspectival belief structure. And... Um, uh, I mean, uh, this follows from uh, the the disagreement uh, that I have with other people's worldviews that my last recordings were, uh, you know, uh, going into. That uh, uh, that you know, it, I mean, on a on a, just 
to talk about my structure of my modeling and, and the fundamental architecture there, uh, one way of looking at it is that Mark and Manuel are obsessed with um, uh, essentially, and they are slightly right, but it's a, it's a facile argument that doesn't work out, that essentially something like propositions are grounded in participation. Now, the actual answer to that, they're not fundamentally grounded in, in, in participation. They're not. It's, it's kind of half right. You can make some kind of argument within some context. You, you can make it fly. But what it overlooks is that participation is grounded in perspective. And at, at some point, there has to be integrity or the right understanding that knows how to manage propositionally the unconscious or at least propositionally has things that can uh, that, that has a particular way of, of, of dealing with or you know, and, and, and everything under the sun, you know, and coping with and managing and controlling and transcending and having victory over the, the participatory realm. Because, you know, uh, and that victory is not in the participatory realm itself. It's not, it can't, it's not grounded in the participatory realm. It's grounded fundamentally in the subconscious. Now, that's a bit of an oversimplification because there are other things afoot that also have to be tended to or whatever because there is also the fourth P, the procedural, uh, the superego in my model. And that is, you know, where the crux of the, the real problem is in terms of the, the thing that has even brought about the false ego complex. Um, I don't know if I want to deal with that topic fully, but because, um, you know, it, the only way to really access talking about it in a cogent way relative to the subconscious gets very sort of airy-fairy and esoteric, and you have to start talking about Adam and Eve, and you have to, uh, uh, which is really, you know, you have to understand that what is written in Genesis is not true, it's spiritually true, and it's true in the understanding, in, in, in sort of regimenting the understanding or priming the understanding to have the right impetus that it can actually overcome uh, uh, you know, all, the, all the kinds of spiritual work that has to be done in order to uh, conserve that, that opening uh, uh, gambit of, of hope or promise, which is only properly fulfilled, you know, going through all the requisite kinds of, of dis, you know, development of discerning and, and uh, uh, so, so you, you can have a kind of a proto understanding that can, that, that is roughly correct, that is approximately correct, but it's approximately correct and good enough to hold you in good stead that it can also even suspend its own endorsement of its own proto understanding so that it can develop and cultivate a, a real justified understanding you know so it's sort of it's aware of its own inadequacy to some degree um, it's humble and meek but also confident enough that the project is worth striving for uh, That there is essentially that, 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 you know, that you must have a justified understanding. Uh, th that, that's a teleos. Th 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 that's a purpose. And, you know, some people, they don't have this purpose and they just don't have the key. Uh, you know, they, they see a mystery and they just get mystified or, or transfixed. 
and they just fall in line to some participatory cult or, or, or external that, that huddles around some external locus of control or, or some convenient excuse as to why you can continue to love the darkness, to love not to understand, because you've found some consolation. Now, arguably, ed anyone, and even someone with my understanding, could be libeled or, 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 or could be accused of anything, um, and could be accused of, of making other concessions, and, and yes, and, you know, uh, uh, but I mean, this is in some sense. I, 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 th this is the difference I think between the genuine doctrine and pretenders, is that the genuine doctrine can actually grapple at, in terms of defending uh, one's own integrity, and that, th and the defense of that integrity does not mean that oh, I was always correct in my beliefs. But it's something like I'm always honest in my beliefs, and I'm trans parents or they are susceptible to uh, counterclaim. They are open to negotiation. Now, I guess some people can say, oh, but that's not true because you don't tolerate the trolling of other people who have um, ulterior, uh, incompatible worldviews to your own. And I say, yes, and I have that for good reason. You know, so it, it, it's sort of, it's proven in contestation. It's not proven in some kind of hypothetical, objective, participatory, top-down abstraction, uh, it, it's actually in the in the litigation process itself, um, and I would notice, you know, how some people depend essentially on concocting dog piling type. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I also I, I I don't like any um, fora in which essentially th there there is a uh, I mean, you can call it a kind of peanut gallery of, of um, you know, that th th there is this intellectual mood, you know, uh, th th that the culture is, um, I mean, I, th I think this roughly corresponds to this, uh, 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 this little piece of, or this little nugget of, you know, that, that if, if you're not strange enough, if you're not exotic enough to be seen as potentially beautiful in your, uh, in, in, in the clouds of mystery that, that you come wrapped in, if you can be seen as being essentially a, a, a local, uh, then you, you're not going to prophesy here to us. Uh, we're not going to be prophesied to by, 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 by a local denizen who has imbibed the same water, who has drunk in the same water, who comes from the same culture, uh, and, 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 and think that, that, that you've concocted some resolution to some great mystery uh, when it's easy for us to just project our uh, presuppositions uh, uh, you know, onto your origin story and to you know, to narrate you within some... Uh, uh, neatly classified uh, uh, participatory trope which our worldview already has a handle on. And then uh, there are also other things that get you thrown out, I guess, which is, you know, that, that you are a, uh, uh, what's the word, that you're a kind of malcontent uh, because you, 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 you don't make peace, uh, or, or, or you, you, you're not settled enough to uh, interface. Uh, and and I, I think that that generally happens when cultures don't have a high regard for integrity or understanding. Uh, they've already found their panaceas. They've already found their snake oil. Um, and quite happy with the service provided by their local snake oil salesman. Um, so, you know, the, the worm of doubt, as it were, uh, uh, you know, the, the impetus to leave no stone unturned, you know, is, is uh, there's, there's a spiritual laziness. Uh, and, and, and this has been rebranded as, as, a, as a kind of tranquility. 
uh, because there's some kind of collective prophecy about the congregation of that uh, uh, participatory uh, atmosphere. Anyway, um, what was I going to say about uh, Adam and Eve? Yes, I mean, I was going to talk about the soul and the spirit and, and use Adam and Eve and sort of gender to say that, you know, um, you know Eve like the uh, symbolizing the soul because, uh, you, know, you know, technically Eve didn't fall. She was seduced. It was Adam that was, uh, uh, that was essentially his, his spiritual understanding was confused to the point at which that he was spiritually dead in that day. He, he lost his good standing. He lost his integrity. Um, Because symbolically, the, the soul of man was seduced and the spirit of man was confused. In which the spirit gives up the soul. Oh, you know, this woman that you gave me, uh, she, she gave it to me and presented it as, as good food. Um, but I was just going to say that the, the spirit itself, and if I'm correct, that the, it's the subconscious and the ego that together make this identity complex, which can also be generally seen as the spirit, and that the propositional must be seen as founded in belief. And there is a, you know, that the belief is the stimulus for the emergent response. The subconscious is the stimulus. Sorry. Um, uh Yeah, the, the emergent response is the, is the stimulus for the subconscious belief, and the subconscious belief uh, sorry, I'm trying to use my terminology here, I'm getting a bit tripped up. Um, the foundation of, of the ego uh, essentially networks with other sides of the mind within itself and it networks to to the subconscious so um and i call the the connection of the ego with the subconscious which using the four p's is the connection between the propositional and the perspectival i call the worship that the the um The ego uh, is looking to the structure in the perspectival belief structure to see what it worships. And then uh, the subconscious, the foundation of the subconscious is informed by the structure of the propositional of the ego and uh, that is the it is, it is, because it, then it knows what it's devoted to. So now internally, it, then it, it also the, the the other side of the coin of this devotion is that uh, the structure of the subconscious is issuing a declaration that you know has to comport with the devotion, and the ego itself, uh, uh, the, the propositional, has to construct propositions in which. The oath is um, uh, that the other side of, of the worship uh, uh, so you know w w when the foundation of, of the propositional is looking at the structure of the perspectival belief. Uh, set or systems and to, to see what it worships then uh, the actual conscious container the actual stream of thinking i believe that is the oath essentially that that your what you are thinking 
you're generating an oath. And uh, then that oath again uh, uh, is read or, or um, not necessarily the oath itself, but the thing that is generating the oath um, within the propositional machinery is being circularly read as the devotion by the subconscious foundation, the perspectival foundation. Uh, it's being looked to to see what the devotion is. So, you know, the oaths that you are making, um, the thing that is making those oaths is the thing that is being looked to in terms of your subconscious perspective to see what, the, uh, what you are devoted to. And so you are deriving a stimulus from your own propositional engine. And your perspectival engine is um, generating an emergent response. Now, the unconscious is sort of is in between these two things, or at least it's specifically between the subconscious and the ego. But it doesn't go through the unconscious or the participatory realm directly. It's... Uh, to get into the detail of, of that structure is, is going to be too much. But essentially, there's a kind of... The ordinary state of the false ego complex is that all of these things, uh, they don't work. They all have a sin attached to them. They all have a trial and a sin attached to them. And it's the trial of each side of the mind, which is the stable source of... Um, apperception or judgment or, or discerning, which then is utilized as the foundation of the preceding side of the mind. So it is the trial of, of the participatory realm, which is the foundation of the propositional. You see, you, you don't think about things unless they have problems, unless they are, unless you're, you're troubleshooting the confusion of, of the disjointedness of something. But the problem is, is the participatory is not the only source of trouble because let's say there is you have to manage you have to cope with the participatory realm with the world but you also have to cope with the residue of your own incoherence that is sourced within your own subconscious and in some sense because the participatory realm again okay, no, this you can say is maybe a bit esoteric the participatory realm is only occupied by perspectives by candidate perspectives let's say platonically con uh, conceived of or, or, or conceptualized as, 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 as um, so you know you're dealing with spirits the unconscious is just a spiritual realm in which you're dealing with the actions and the forces of people who might be dead who started a process or uh, 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 you know they put momentum into a uh, a participatory structure and that momentum has has preserved itself within the participatory realm and you're actually dealing with a bit of somebody else's subconscious confusion so my view is that essentially it's all just uh, an effigy of sp of some spiritual disposition and you know some things are not are not they are sinful, but they're not sinful because they are, let's say, intrinsically evil or something like that. They are sinful because they just... It's, it's not that the thing itself is intrinsically evil. The action itself is intrinsically evil. It's that there was some, something ill-tempered about the construction of the teleos and the spiritual impetus that went into it. That it was... Um, inopportune in its timing, perhaps. That there are such things as accidents and mistakes. 
that are not errors, that then perhaps result in a confluence of, of, um, of disjointed or dispirited disquiet, which we sit with in the unconscious participatory realm, and how to uh, adjudicate that often is a moot question that doesn't really have any um, relevance to the living. Uh, but in as much as that people can have sympathy for the dead, then it starts being uh, uh, potentially uh, an ongoing... So, you know, we, we have sins compounding other sins, uh, uh, if, if, if I can put it like that. Uh, but essentially then the, the proximate sin is not about cause and effect in the participatory realm, it's about a lack of understanding in the perspectival. And how to curb the excess and latitude that one gets into when one is dealing with... Because essentially the participatory is just the metaphor of the spiritual. But it's a metaphor that doesn't conserve itself. because it doesn't have an internal locus of control, and so it can just sort of latch onto other things and try to associate and embed itself into, you know, it's, it's like a, it's literally sort of a meme mind virus kind of thing, is, is how these things operate, because that's how they have hooked into their participatory niche. Probably, you know, actual viruses are probably a, a very good analogy to this. Anyway, um... And so, you know, essentially, the actual spiritual panacea is direct inoculation of the individual, not public health measures and participatory regulations that dampen or promote some pro-social, you know, that have some collective theory of, of suppression and, and, now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not just, discounting those types of things uh, in some measure, in some way, or something like that. Um, but when you try to have a kind of participatory panacea, which essentially says, well, we don't want the inoculation. In fact, you know, this is good enough, or something like that. Anyway, that's sort of the, uh, an analogy of wh where I think... Uh, you run into a kind of decadent spiritual uh, s supplementation. That I think eventually does literally create a kind of Tower of Babel scenario in which people divorce their own understanding from their own language because their own language purports to hold all understanding and kind of tries to systematize things so well into a kind of polytheism that you you actually you you lose there there is there, there is something correct about the 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 gap in language that that language you know will never be precise and exact um Or it, it shouldn't be, because then you uh, to try to resort to the analogy that I just made just now is that you know you're trying to create a participatory collective inoculation that the individual never contains or possesses in terms of their actual spiritual ownership of it they lose it if they're not connected um, 
as a, as a cog in the machine. And in some sense, you know, the, the problem of dignity looms large because then it's all about membership and belonging. There really is a loss of a kind of fundamental spiritual intimacy. And I've, I've described it as well as a sort of that God becomes a kind of abstraction of some participatory metaphor. And essentially also, I think, I, th I think my parallel that it's like polytheism is also roughly correct. You end up sort of living in a kind of polytheistic experience. Um, or perhaps deistic uh, might, might also be a better description, but, but, but something like that. Um, anyway, I'm talking too much about this. Let me focus on my, my models. Um, okay, yeah, so I do think that the subconscious and the ego is the is essentially uh, the understanding and and, the, and properly the spirit that is acting, and then I mean I, I don't know what to say about the super ego and the unconscious. I mean, the unconscious I think is is nowhere close to as complicated as what the super ego is. I still wonder if if the super ego is not literally mapped onto particular ba brain structures, that the superego is, in some sense, is, is that my model of the superego is perhaps a, a, a metaphysical um, set of components that, that, that the brain literally um, physically uh, uh, has manifested uh, uh, upon it and maybe even genetics as well um, that there might be some correlation between all of those things that there, it might be uh, a chromosome plus brain manifestation is, is what the super ego is and then all the other things are, are being emergent is a kind of uh, and I, when I say emergent I mean in the kind of I'm just trying to make a, a quick analogy here. I don't want to get too bogged down in this, but you know, in terms of, you know, there are some philosophers with theories of free will, and you know, the compatibilists talk about a kind of uh, some kind of weak dualism that comes from the emergence of a kind of immaterial construct um, that is based on some kind of uh, uh, material substrate, and I I think that. Uh, the chromosome brain, uh, anyway, the, 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 there might be a way in which at some point, you know, that you could just do like a brain, a kind of brain scan and say, oh, you, you're this metatype, you're that metatype. Um, and then there, there might be within at least some, if, if medical data was collected and, uh, uh, you know, you could do some kind of, um, uh, what's the word? endocrine level check you could probably with the the combination if you if the if i'm correct about being able to diagnose metatype through being able to see the pattern of a, of a super ego in someone's actual brain configuration uh, physically then also measuring levels of their certain endocrine system might and, and or certain things to do with certain um organ functions like uh, liver and kidney and and, and 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 certain things like that, I think would um, just everything that has to do with the endocrine system. If you measured those things, you could probably work out meta metagram circuit type. Uh, but 
but that would be a kind of a bit of an accident but essentially that the idea would be that the the, the hard structure of the brain when particularly configured towards a particular metagram emotional tone circuitry is going to on aggregate um, create certain patterns of thinking or, or at least I mean obviously there, there will be a variety of, of health within particular species uh, of, of personality style so you know uh, different personality styles uh, uh, may be with at, at radically different times of life and times of psychological health or development within their own false ego complex uh, developmental uh, uh, you know structure maybe they might mimic each other but uh, anyway i mean it, it you, you you might be able to work out i mean and also then you might be able to use other things you might be able to use facial features as well um with you know some kind of computer ai um you know if you just told a computer these thousand people are the same metagram type and these other thousand people are this other metagram type and these other thousand people are this other metagram type and then you know when you feed all that information in maybe the computer uh you know will be able to find random correspondences where it can diagnose um just from uh Well, technically, it wouldn't be a diagnosis, but but it would be a um, uh, some kind of dumb correspondence uh, bank. Anyway, that's um, the more psychologically relevant thing about this is that there is something about the the terminal beast uh, the prime death that um, in in the the foundation of of the super ego which is the sin of the ego um, hmm this purely objectified dimension of psychological reality, which probably has, has some kind of, uh, well, I mean, perhaps, potentially, I mean, this is somewhat speculative, perhaps has a, a, a brain uh, that you sort of, you have to objectify at least one dimension, at least have a false ego complex, which it seems is what we all come into the world with. Um, or at least develop. And, and that, in some sense, really... There's something about that feature, which I think is a perennial feature, which even in full integration... Um, it stays and it's in a special kind of place and position because the crucifixion continues to run. Um, so it's a kind of, it's a necessary opaque dimension of psychological reality. But the thing that changes is how the parent function of the superego is corresponding with it. And so it, it is that... Uh, Uh, resuscitation of of the tree of life but that also requires the the reformation of you know what is roughly described as as the new jerusalem the dominant function in the superego uh which anyway i've spoken about how i think that this corresponds with uh In, in, in other recordings, the, the child function of the superego is, is the dragon 
uh, and the dominant function is, is probably closer to the, well, in this revised thing, I mean, I used to call it, uh, but, but uh, I, I think the dominant function represents the false prophet. And then essentially the, the parent function essentially represents the knowledge of good and evil. Um, and the beast is represented by, by what I've already referred to as the, the foundation of the superego or, the, or the, the terminal beast or the prime death. But yeah, I think the um, the rehabilitation of the parent function in the super ego after all the other things are properly cleared up because essentially uh, the dragon has been retransfigured or whatever into the lake of fire where it is uh, containing and preventing the manifestation of the false prophet in the in the dominant function of, of the superego and therefore you no longer have this uh, the foundation of the unconscious is not beholden to the prayer to the knowledge of good and evil that the prayer is now articulated in such a way in which the parent function is not yoked by the beast uh, the, the the parent function is not essentially a, a, the knowledge of good and evil that precipitates through these layers of, of uh, You could call it procedural holographic projection, which are generally being uh, um, maybe projection. Maybe it's the other way around that the unconscious is reading this from the structure of the super ego. But constructively speaking, the problem is in the super ego. The problem is is that you can't you can't get inside there to fix it until you've integrated all the other three sides of the mind which means that you have to deal with the unconscious before you solve the underlying problem in the unconscious. You, you have to deal with the participatory realm before you fully understand what's going on in terms of what's going on inside yourself that's causing the problem in the participatory realm. And so you really have to solve the personal problem before you solve the collective problem, and, uh, which is why it's important to prioritize integrity and understanding uh, before, you know, uh, essentially clean your room before you go out and try to change the world, essentially. Um, but, you know, th th that doesn't, uh, uh, anyway, you know, any, some, tr trying to reduce it into a syllogism doesn't really exactly work. You, you have to sort of cotton on to the spirit of uh, of the spiritual understanding which already sees itself as fundamentally independent of the participatory realm uh, and that can take responsibility for contending all of its propositional structures uh, and is capable of sacrificing for those contentions uh, you know, paying the the cost of endorsement instead of trying to camouflage itself into a participatory uh you know, which is why, in some sense, it was so important uh, that Jesus was crucified for his theology, for his doctrine. Because, you know, essentially what Jesus said was what everybody else is supposed to say, is that uh, uh, um, if they have the same understanding as him, is, is that they should say, I am the only begotten Son of God. Now, you know, the proper understanding of what that means and what the only begotten Son is, is uh, 
slightly problematic. Um, and essentially why he was crucified is because this could not be understood in a spiritual way. It could only be understood in a worldly participatory way. And people were not willing to have the spiritual understanding. They wanted the they wanted something more fleshly, essentially. So, I mean, this is a kind of... You know, this is a perennial developmental obstacle that needs to be understood and graduated from. And essentially without the courage of conviction to essentially allow yourself to be crucified for your understanding uh, and even to subvert your own, the, the integrity of your identity in order to rope other people into your own system of accountability, which you earn by actually doing the crucifixion, uh, by doing the sacrifice. But I'll just say this, that the sacrifice doesn't win you the world, and it doesn't win other people understanding. It just gives them access, the opportunity it, it does not, uh, because the world cannot receive it. So this is the problem, is the heart of man is inclined towards loving the darkness. Uh, and I mean, this is generally because there's a lack of role model. You know, we don't have very good role models. Um, I mean... There's, there's limits to what a role model can do as well, because essentially a role model has to be, uh, what's the word? You, know, you could imagine that celebrities might be better role models by being opinionated but also humble in not using their celebrity to proselytize uh, beyond their let's say you know that they have some uh, ethical contention or gripe about their own uh, legitimacy to to be role models you know depending on what they are celebrities for Trying to think of a good analogy to do with stars. So the, the stars give you the seasons. Uh, you know, some some marker of where you are in in, in you know in 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 a season, but that. Uh, This is perhaps too much of a broad and messy subject to try to say something concrete about. Um, uh, 
I'm, I'm just trying to say that, you know, there are ways in which that you can be Like Elon Musk, I think, does this quite well. I'm actually surprised at whenever he says, when he offers a, an opinion about something, um, you know, how curtly he packages it with a substantiation. You know, it's, it's literally just um, a little package of a rationalization. You know, so he's just literally giving people um, something to think on. He's giving them a candidate notion or theory to, to use as a tool. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's content, you know, so I don't actually think that he's really giving his opinion. He is proselytizing a candidate theory or notion about how to do thinking about a particular subject. You know, so it, it gives you a model of, of how to generate opinions. Um, I don't, okay, let me not get into too much weird esoteric language. What I mean by opinion is is essentially because I mean opinions just come to you because they just you perceive them. Um, but you know the actual notions frame essentially the uh, uh, the conduit through which opinions are fielded and rendered. Um, anyway, let me not get into weird uh, platonic discussions. Um, Yeah, I need to make a recording about the div Plato's divided line again, because I mean I, I have. The reason why I think the divided line works is because there are four sides of the mind, and essentially, the four P's map onto Plato's divided line, and they map onto the four sides of the mind. Essentially, the the super ego is the procedural, the doing, uh, the the fully embodied kind of immediate. Um, Thing that is that that is there's i think the super ego essentially has a kind of fundamental oceanic perspective uh of, of existence you know um the subconscious is the perspectival uh which essentially that those structures and sets make up into structures of being or, or, or how, how you be in the world, your sense of what you be, and how you can show up and manifest different senses of, of how you be, uh, are all from the data banks of beliefs that you store, and that you've got perhaps some structure of how these different beliefs can composite into uh, essentially candidate social masks uh, uh, or, or valences. Um, the unconscious uh, is the participatory. It is, you know, so you, you, you with the unconscious fundamentally is problematic as well because uh, you can only ground it within some shared medium of some shared arena. And if there's no shared faith or shared trust or something like that as to a, share, a common understanding as to what's going on, then the default is up for grabs and it's unconscious and you know there are always unknown unknowns within the participatory domain as well and some of those are perhaps uh, there's perhaps a gradation of, of, of difficulty and there there are some forbidden unknown unknowns which the reason why they're forbidden is because to try to accumulate that kind of participatory knowledge is fundamentally voids your perspectival basis and puts and suspends it into a kind of uh, languishing um, supplicant of, of some uh, external brainiac, to use the Superman comic book um, uh, um, motif and story that, that you've got a, a, a decentralized collective intelligence or, or you know, some crazy thing like that. 
Um, uh, but uh, so you know, th there's there's a participatory potentiality of self disintegration and self degradation, which are possible manifestations within the participatory realm so you know you have to navigate these things uh, and so you know your perspective's inability to navigate those things is you know sort of not um, doesn't mean that the participatory becomes preeminent and all controlling and all powerful that's just be itself swept up in my view in a kind of forbidden ab disembodied abstracted uh, uh you know thing in which you're just table thumping that everything is grounded in the, in the participatory um is is to already relinquish uh any hope of integrity in some sense um into a narrative into a participatory narrative uh which is which you know you're claiming will will suffice for you um so i i i generally conceive of that as being always a species of slave morality, essentially. You've really conditioned yourself into some kind of slave morality, which in my view probably means that, you know, there's, you don't want to look under the hood of the problem in the superego. Uh, you, you, you know, you're not worried about anything. It's, it's just, uh, uh, you know, I mean, these are people that I think will have, uh, anyway, um, I don't want to make, general aspersions but you know that that's uh i mean do people not remember anything about their early developmental life in terms of their the development of their own personality i mean do, do they not you know they've filled in all of these gaps with just um studying developmental science and thinking that they have recreated an image of their own development instead of remembering it and following their own chain of decisions in their own uh, contemplative mental experience you know th that that they, they they can just they can displace that with just participatory participatorily grounded conceptualization and hypothetical imagination i mean that they have basically displaced their subconscious with i believe a kind of imagined projection from this participatory junk but but anyway or or cultism or whatever um trying to ground everything in there uh which that's fundamental i mean I, the reason why i call it always fascistic as well is because essentially that is that is the general ideological grift of of all totalitarians and fascists is they basically say get with the program because we must get with the program there must be a program and it's been here before you and it's older than you so you better get with it uh, and and uh, there's a lot for you to learn so you know the the fundamental degradation and, and diminution of, of of the perspectival um into being infantilized by the participatory uh anyway so uh, that you know the third sec what was I doing just now? I was relating this to the divided line. Uh, yeah, so that's the participatory. That's the third segment of the divided line. What was that? What was that? What I was doing? Now, I, I do want to make this recording where I really look at the divided line and and overlay these things on it, and then talk about the developmental challenges. And projected onto the divided line, uh, because I, I do think that you can kind of you can recreate cerebral histrionic and narcissism using essentially Plato's divided line, um, roughly speaking. Although obviously with the my meta type model, it's perhaps much more precise. Um,
although in the platonic model that I made, I didn't write a lot about the problem of the opinion, only that the opinion needs to be properly integrated with the notion, or the first segment of the divided line needs to be integrated with the second segment. But the problem is, is that you first have to deal with the second and the fourth, and the fourth and the third. And, that, and those two couplings are also a juxtaposition. The second and the fourth, and the, and the third and the fourth section, seg, uh, segments of the divided line need to be independently, those pairings need to be integrated. Um, so that then you have the tools, essentially, to integrate the fourth and the first. And in some sense, they can't exactly be integrated, but they, well, the crucifixion is balancing them to the point at which that the first can be integrated with the second, which is essentially the kind of the primal healing to the primal hurt in the sacred contract, which is essentially the, the primal beast is the sacred contract. Um, which, which was the, uh, the way in which the superego was orchestrating um, the interference with the spirit in the first place, or, or the interference with the identity complex via the ego, via placing a kind of negative projective pressure against the ego which it was also doing by priming the unconscious, although you could say that the, it was the unconscious that was linking up with the superego and doing that, but, and that the unconscious was just trying to write its own independent uh, ship or, 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 or trying to stabilize its own structure. The problem, though, is that, you know, that... It's weird because you have to do some work in that, but you, you can't, you know, you, you, you do have to get probably your unconscious developed in such a way so that you have a good baseline. But that, I think, is, is generally what leads people astray is that they get too enamored with trying to embellish and they, it's a kind of decadence in terms of, oh, okay, well, if I get a meticulous model of the unconscious participatory arena, then that is the 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 general supplement that is the general solution to everything so they've got a kind of i mean i i think that's roughly what keegan stage 3.5 is it, it, it's it's a kind of um i mean i've described it many times uh, re, re, i've described it many times recently that it's a uh, kind of like a I don't want to go through describing it again, but essentially it amounts to a kind of nihilism, solipsism. But also a, a kind of consolation prize. Because, you know, sort of uh, the veil that is placed uh, in terms of ascertaining or grounding truth within anything other than the participatory domain gives the belief structure a crutch that it can use to lob insults and hurl problems at other people and and sort of so you, the crutch that you receive for yourself is the is the obstacle that is prodding other people essentially This is too poetic to phrase it like this, but it's sort of your crutch is the is the mot in somebody else's eye. And the reason why that's stated slightly mystically is because in some sense, because it's not important necessarily that they actually agree with you, just that you can kind of participate in such a way, so you can kind of 
you can overlook it as long as you can just kind of uh, they don't have to understand because there's no real prize for understanding because there's only trophies for participation because in some sense understanding is a category which is fundamentally you know you, you can just get conscripted into it rather so it doesn't matter that you can't see it with your own eyes or not it doesn't Discerning doesn't matter. You, you, you'll be conditioned by the system. Or you will eventually understand through conditioning. So this is a kind of automatic acclamation. A kind of automatic induction. I, I do think that this is a, a very evil synthesis because I do think that this creates a kind of spiritual zombie which has this kind of lukewarm aspect embedded right in its in the core of its DNA of this kind of dogmatic self-considered agnosticism in that the status of belief in God is, is purely I mean it doesn't mean anything I mean it, it just it matters if you participate in church because that, then supposedly uh, Yeah, I wonder if that is a mistake that Peterson has made saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you say, it matters what you do. Like, that is a low-level way of, let's say, doing a kind of spiritual self-diagnosis with your own integrity. But the idea that that becomes the perennial test that don't look at what you say, only look at what you do, because essentially you must just regard yourself as continually a liar and that you cannot be trusted. And so... You know, the idea that, well, then don't try to propositionally articulate things clearly. You know, just just do the right thing. I mean, it, it's the level of there's a fundamental despondency, despondency which is sort of so inane and self. I, re I really do think that there's there's a there's almost like a fundamental sadistic thing in the bad faith of the cerebral histrionic. Anyway, let me not harp on too much about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do see it. fundamentally a lot of things. Sadly, they amount to being character flaws. I mean, they they literally are. Uh, you know, you get these retards chirping oh, ad hominem, ad hominem. I mean, that is literally, I mean, you know, if you make yourself stupid, if you are literally retarding uh, the, the discussion or debate process by your own unilateral, heavy-handed chairmanship of the discourse, because, because your program is unassailable and, and can just lob whatever insults it wishes from its side, I mean... A level of fundamental I mean, it, 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 I mean there's a there's a kind of sadistic malevolence there but but you know obviously a kind of conceit um, now, now that that in the alternative it's just overt bad faith and dishonesty and quite underhanded uh, trolling, essentially. I mean, so I, I don't think that, you know, it's either the one or the other. The idea that, well, if you can keep it ambiguous, then it's neither, you know, a, a more childish bullshit. You know, that's the kind of technicality that this kind of cerebral histrionic 
disposition lends itself. It's also, I mean, it's, it's interesting, you know, in the actual mechanics of discourse, you know, when, or when you actually hear an answer and you don't understand, but then you just try to find another technical weak point to try to exploit, um, instead of integrating that, okay, well, I didn't understand that answer. So instead of just trying another crack at it, uh, another subversive, uh, uh, you know, th that you actually try to model the thing that you're supposedly critiquing before you even fucking understand it. Because in some sense, it's, well, there is no such thing as understanding or replicating understanding. So it's just participatory bullying at that point. You know, fucking absolute miscreants. Anyway, uh, and I mean, it's essentially, the, ironically, they fall victim of the same thing that they accuse me of as well, because. somehow their propositional constructions represent participatory truisms. So they are infallible and, you know, unassailable and undeniable. Uh, but they still end up producing propositional constructions uh, which I mean, uh, I guess, you know, they are overtly trolling me and they give themselves license to do so and also to, to lead to this uh, inquisition and, and, and construct this inquisition in this way uh, to prove that their bad faith is in, inviolable. I, if, if that isn't sort of fundamental wickedness and the love of darkness, I, I don't know what is, you know, the, the, but yeah, anyway, I, mean, I, I do think that a lot of intellectualism around these deep topics, they, they do center around deep issues of, of character and therefore also character assassination, you know, and, and the idea that you can just kind of, that you can force people to play your, your dishonest intellectual game uh, and then, you know, use the, the, uh, the scaffolding of, of complaining about ad hominem. I mean, it, I mean, again, it, 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 I find it amazing how people can construct such a high vision of their own, I mean, by their own account, they don't have an understanding that can be uh, defended, uh, but because uh, but because I say that I do, then I can become a victim to this uh, uh, dastardly and sadistic uh, uh, literal trolling. Simply because it formulaically comports within their so-called moral worldview. probably better not to think about it because you know the more I think about it uh, the, the the more condemnation I, I, I generate about it but I mean I this I mean and and this is you know certainly 
this species of intellectual dishonesty abounds everywhere. I mean, this is essentially, Sam Harris gets into this. It's just that I, I do think that Mark and Manuel have uh, found a way to construct the same game just using uh, uh, different philosophic, uh, at, at a different philosophical level that um, seemingly gives them the cover of the dogma of, 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 a, of an unassailable starting point. Well, I start after creation, therefore, uh, and, and, you know, and if someone says, well, I'm not prepared to give you that. Uh, well, and then, and then his whole worldview is invalidated. Uh, and he doesn't have the time to try to understand anything ulterior. Or, or he, anyway, I mean, because he's satisfied and sufficient. But I mean, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the game, I guess. Um, as you set up a kind of, uh, I mean, there is a kind of narcissistic asymmetry with cerebral histrionics in their production of their own blind faith, or, and, and which then I think, I, I don't think it can avoid becoming ba a bad faith. Uh, because I mean essentially every time that they engage in that bad faith they just well I'm excused I, I'm, I'm dispensed this because it's necessary for the worldview to be self consistent so I can indulge in this sadistic sludge and then anything that just is formulaically not capable of playing the same game of permitting and licensing that kind of bad faith is just already thrown off because anything that doesn't by definition allow you to do that doesn't allow you to play your intellectual tricks that allow you to teach other people how to navigate things you know so it's, it's, it's this weird kind of um, table thumping about the participatory domain that ends up into a kind of never-ending gainsaying, gainsaying uh, on a meta-ethical level, uh, which it knows it has no grounding in any kind of meta-ethics, and it's nihilistic about that fundamentally. Um, or rather, it's solipsistic about that issue fundamentally. And so because that is part of the worldview that's part of the narrative because they only live in a narrative they don't understand it they don't pretend to understand it they are just conditioned from the view of that so it's just fundamentally a blind faith they say that their eyes are open it's essentially because they are transfixed on this on this set game match uh, I mean, I, I would essentially call them worshippers of Set, but anyway. But uh, I, th that's how I've described cerebral histrionics before, as worshippers of Set, but anyway. Um, it's just interesting seeing them everywhere. The Grand Snake. Okay, let me get back to uh, the thing that I interrupted myself doing, which was the sort of the four sides of the mind overlay with with the metatype. Um, uh, so, so the Platonic. Uh, divided line with the four sides of the mind and uh, the, the, the the sketch that I already made of the four sides of the mind that kind of have some of these developmental hurdles sort of projected onto them uh, and then I talked about cerebral histrionic of it um, 
essentially there there is like a fundamental problem but you have to put it on the back burner essentially which is the super ego because the and the super ego is the procedural what you are doing in this almost fully simple basic kind of primordial impetus that is the even the the pre the presuppositional structure that the subconscious proceeds from and so you have to clear up what you're doing because th th that's a fundamental problem is that you actually start doing things before you have an un you have a fully conscious understanding about it because to have a fully conscious understanding about it you actually have to participate in the false ego complex and resolve the false ego complex theoretically as it were abstractly so, and then use that as the as the guide to particularly understand what it is that you were doing in the beginning all along so that you can reformat that and or, or you can heal that so you proceeded in error in terms of something that you're doing which set up all these things like the false ego complex that emerged but you can't you can't avoid the false ego complex it's something that you actually have to first integrate from from essentially and 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 and, and that you need to actually have a proper understanding or proper integrity. You, you, you need to get the spirit that is guiding the false ego complex in order. And then that spirit that, uh, that knows how to uh, distinguish itself from the participatory domain, the identity complex, the understanding, which is the subconscious perspectival and the ego propositional, uh, know how to distinguish themselves or, or, or see the distinction between the understanding and participatory uh, um, involution or inception and, and sort of getting the muck on you in a way that it becomes intractable and insoluble or whatever. And so that is quintessentially i think the crux of what law is in some sense the the the, the law aspect of uh, th that appears in the christian doctrine that is the kind of that, that is where the necessity of law comes in essentially that the the rationale of the of the of the, the 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 proper resolution to the never ending mysteries that one comes across in the participatory arena is essentially by understanding the law, then you, you have this ordered, as it were. Uh, uh, you, you have a kind of theoretical containment of this thing. But the point of this theoretical containment is not to manage the subconscious. It is actually to be able to then triangulate what it was that you were doing in the first place and understand what you were doing in the first place, which is something that you haven't fully understood. But before you do that, you have to have a proto-understanding that you have to sort of have these certain values, these certain um, uh, endorsed fundamental axiomatic elements in your in your grounding of your own understanding, which you have to you have to epistemologically forge, in that you have to you have to do them by choosing to do that. So you have to wrought your own epistemology from your ego, and that's obviously dangerous because of the the danger of it mixing with the participatory narrative you know so so, so, so you know you, you need to have uh, so you know you need to learn how to relate to the unconscious participatory and then you know because because the, the thing is is that the unconscious is is the closest representation that one has in the false ego complex to what it is that you are doing in terms of your super ego you know, because the, the super ego is what you are doing, and the unconscious is essentially your frame of reference in terms of understanding participation, understanding what to do something means. You know, so there's there's a the the particular, uh, you know, I I I believe that this is this, this is roughly equivalent to um, oh man, I can't remember the. A term that's used in uh, some stage of development by um, I don't think is it no it's not Maslow uh, 
I, I can't remember. Um, it, it, it's, the, it's the thing that basically leads to the dissolution of the oceanic experience. Um, because you have, uh, uh, I can't remember the term, but, but essentially, I mean, I, I've, I've described this, uh, I've, I've defined this term as, as in terms of what it is, what's happening phenomenologically, is that essentially you are systematizing verbs. You, 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 you are uh, creating an environmental model, essentially, um, of how the world works. Uh, and you know to do that you have to have essentially a collection of tropes and um, models and then you are just kind of used to projecting that onto you know so, so that would be something like maybe it's related to salience as well but, you know, so, so you've got a whole lot of a bank of connotation about, you know, what verbs are associated with other verbs and how these things often uh, um, occur or, 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 or propagate uh, and, and, and interrelate to one another. And so you have a kind of, um, anyway. Uh, doesn't help that I can't think of the actual um, term. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a psychological developmental term. Um, and it, 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 it happens, uh, it, it's something that happens within the acquisition of language, essentially. Um, uh, but it, it, it the, the development of, of that whole experience or, or, or faculty ha is bound, bound, it has bound within it this kind of the, the spiritual developmental obstacle because um, the, the connection between the superego and the unconscious is a one-way connection. The, they're not um, connected the other way. So the, what you are doing is reflected in as a kind of, as, as a inherent sort of, you know, you could call it maybe a kind of prejudice or a bias or, but it's, it's just, it's baked in to already your network of conception in terms of how you can define verbs, how you can label verbs and how you categorize and, and um, name things that, that are occurring around you. Um, according to a bank of an, of an environmental expectation and anticipation of the unconscious, unknown, participatory realm and arena. So, you know, your bank of categorizing, framing and, and referring to what it is that, that, that is, you know, because essentially, and, and, and so, 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 so there's this almost, it, 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 there's this fractal quality of the unconscious because essentially everything that you can do is is also deeply reflected in in a corresponding environmental um, uh, 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 concordance, and so that th that that sort of concordant nature of how the participatory has a kind of uh, a reflective. Um, capacity uh, in, in terms of how you are seeing yourself from a third person perspective but it's in it's in a uh, a model of the environment as it were but it's a moral but, but you know what does that even mean i, I mean these things uh, in, in in the deeper actual thing of what it actually is is it it is prepositional intelligibility the, 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 that's my argument is that the only way to actually understand um, the elements of the unconscious as it were is essentially from a kind of subconscious strata of, of perspectival prepositional uh, uh, belief purports or, or teleological edges and teleological spins but essentially there, there is a medium there is a carrier for this because essentially 
you know, we have to deal with the residue of people who aren't there to declare what their teleological thing is, and, and, but, and it, it continues to persist in some form. And so you end up with a beast. You, you, you end up with, with essentially elements of field circuits uh, because there is this um, intelligible uh, stream of, of um, or you could call it a trope of, of th 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 that parallels a subconscious perspectival belief system but you know there's a you know you're talking about the, the bridge between the subconscious and and the unconscious the bridge between the subconscious and the um sorry the the perspectival and the participatory and that is essentially what emotional tones are in my model so so, so that's the source of emotional tones but um but then there is the other thing is that, well, you're already doing something. And what it is that you are already doing is preeminent and comes before the emotional tone. That's the thing in actuality that you are actually doing. But instead, you only have the capacity to see in the reflective surface of the participatory arena, which is, again, this concept, that's a conceptual container, uh, um, you 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 are seeing these emotional tones. Uh, you you are seeing these cognitive inflections, which are suggestive of subconscious perspectives. But that's I don't want to say that it 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 it, it also is subject to something like in the eye of the beholder. But it's not exactly it, it's not peculiar. It, it's it's uh, um, it's not as peculiar as that might sound. It, it it's that people will actually have different anatomy within their particular subconsciouses. So they will. Um, have have a, a a different subconscious filter, as it were. Um, so it, it's not exactly in the eye of the of, of the beholder. It, it it is that is interpretation. You could say is an interpretation, but it is structurally um, bound by essentially metatype. Um, so there is this sex between metatype and 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 emotional tones, which is which is another sort of peculiar cross pollination of 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 how these structures. Um, come together but the okay uh, anyway so you know this is um so so you you have to treat the unconscious with some kind of dubiousness because you don't know what what in it is already let's say colored or tainted by your own super ego and this isn't entirely uh, such a huge problem, but it is, a, it is a personal problem that needs to be solved at some point in terms of actual self-actualization and, and uh, doing the work of salvation and, and, and fixing the primal hurts and you know, just re-accessing the tree of life. But, um, and, and sort of rehabilitating re uh, you know, the... The, the knowledge of good and evil into the tree of life and, you know, putting the false prophet in the lake of fire and all that good stuff. But, and, but those superego things essentially are, uh, in some sense, they're teleologically uh, intended to be done after the crucifixion. You, you, you really have to do the crucifixion first and, and, and you have to and, and so the the proto understanding that isn't fully self-realized and self-actualized yet has to have the courage to forge the epistemology and is also doing this without full view of their own ontology but has to have um let's say, the courage, the spiritual courage and the spiritual understanding to set themselves into this kind of navigation um, towards this project. Okay, anyway, so the, so I'm just trying to describe that the, the, the problem of this project is that what you are doing is, has a little bit of a hand in what, in already your conceptual contemplative 
understanding, let's just say, of the participatory arena, which means that the participatory arena is, is always slightly dubious and suspect, and you don't know to what part your own, let's say, innate fallen super ego is, is driving, you know, so you really have to, at some point, you have to set up the identity complex, the understanding, the subconscious and the ego against the unconscious to some degree. Um, that could probably be, maybe that should be phrased better, but uh, let me just leave that for now. But, but the, but you, 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 you already have this fundamental antagonism built into the structure because the unconscious side of the mind does not link back to the superego. It's only the superego that links to the unconscious one way, or you could say that the, the foundation of the unconscious is reading the structure of, of the superego, but the superego structure does not get any feedback from the structure of the unconscious. So, so that's, that's a one-way thing. It's not, like the, it's not like the understanding. It's not like the identity complex within the false ego complex that, that it's wired both ways. But the ego, the propositional side of the mind, gets to have a view as to the structure of the unconscious. It gets, it gets to see the structure of the unconscious, you know, you know, and, and this is, you know, you see this everywhere in MBTI stuff, you know, this is, you know, and, and people decry this because, <laughs> because they don't like it, because they, they would rather find another solution. But, you know, they always say, oh, you know, all these crackpots, typologists and, and personality theorists, and they all end up, you know, sounding like the same mad hatters or whatever, crying about how everyone needs to integrate with their inferior function. They need to integrate with their inferior function. Yes, that is actually the solution for the ego. The, the problem is, is that when you're dealing with MBTI or Socionics or any of these approximate systems, uh, they're just not detailed enough. Uh, they, they, they don't have the right functions in the right places. So there's a, there's an, a, it, it, it is badly, uh, you, you can't do this kind of delicate work with an approximate model. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there, there are a lot of good ideas in, in typology they, uh, they're just, they fail for, um, for their lack of complexity, for their lack of theoretical depth. Um, anyway, uh, let me just, uh, um, so the problem is, is that it's not obvious what the ego can do with that. Uh, you know, so it, it's a looming question Again, I mean, I actually call it the question. But essentially, that question eventually is the thing that I believe is essentially, that is the thing that blossoms into Christ consciousness. It's the inferior function in the ego. Because the power of that question, um, essentially, that is the rudder. And that is the rudder that, that is resurrected within the superego and, and conserves its content. So how the ego is treating the unconscious, how the ego sees the unconscious, discerns what's going on in the unconscious, becomes the resurrected uh, uh, glory in the superego that also does the work of, of the self-healing or, or, because, because that question has amalgamated within it all the other understandings of all the other mechanisms of, of you know, because you have to, for, for, for that question to, to be able to crucify itself, it has to, um, essentially, it will be doing epistemic responsibilism. And so because, you know, it's actually paying for it, it's actually doing the proper sacrifice, it's doing the technology of the crucifixion, um, it, then it, it buys also its own self-healing because it's um, in this redemptive gift of uh, taking on this wider net of accountability, it gains insight into, its own, into, into what it is that you are doing because it, it was capable of burdening the whole world. So it's capable of actually opening the door to the superego and seeing what it is that you were doing. And then you can actually do, you know, the healing of the, of the sacred contract, the, the feet of, of the beast.
the the beast, the uh, dragon, and the false prophet. So so you clear up the super ego, and then once you've got a, a cleared up super ego, uh, the subconscious is, I would argue, already in a decent state. If if you if your if your understanding was capable of going through the crucifixion, but then there is perhaps a uh, I, I can't think of of a of a useful word, but um, there's perhaps a, a, a re a resettling um, connection uh, because essentially the stimulus um, is going to be replaced uh, by a more articulated and uh, in, in, in integrated superego. And so you you've actually you, you you've you've made a uh, you've constructively made a connection between the inferior function of the super ego through the super ego through the subconscious to then be able to handle the unconscious side of the mind the participatory domain in a much more mm, uh, integrated form but i mean you know what that means according to the standards of the world i mean is 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 neither here nor there that's you know um well i mean i, I guess i could say the description of, of what is in the scripture but you know scene of angels uh believed on in the world uh you know th 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 that that is the the description of the ascended self-realized christ consciousness um uh, what is it a scene of angels believed on in the world something about not lift his hand up uh, uh, unto vanity uh to not raise his hand on uh, anyway um so which is essentially a kind of way of describing some kind of um deep self consistency that that you can be believed on in the world it's 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 it's, it's very interesting because you see nothing in the world is ever believed in but there are things that you can trust and that therefore you believe on them so already there there is this you can see in the in the king james scripture how there is such a careful uh english translation uh, a direct translation of of the actual doctrine not just uh, uh some kind of literal uh, codex uh, uh parsing out of, of, you know, of some brainiac uh, uh, procedure, because I mean, you know, you can't translate these things if you don't have a, a scriptural, uh, sorry, if you don't have a doctrinal understanding. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, if, if, if someone translates the Bible and they don't understand the doctrine, it's a useless translation. Especially when you're dealing with something in which the written word is always dead. Because it's the understanding of the scripture itself. That's the only thing that's there. I mean, it's, it's even directly in the scripture. It talks about this issue. Search the scriptures and they are they which speak of me. And in them you will not find me or come to me so that you may have life. You know, it's uh, the letter killeth and the spirit giveth life. And then people that have already sort of displaced the spirit for the spirit of participation. You know, and, and, you know, what spirits have they tried in ulterior to that? I mean, they just have that and then they have an accusing spirit. Oh, I guess I could, the same thing could be levied against me with the rebukes that I try to issue.
anyway, um, okay, so I'm, I just wanted to go through that to map out, because uh, that's the integration of the super ego with the ego is not something that I explicitly put into my force, uh, in, in, into my um, divided line sort of description of, because I was actually, I was actually taking it from a pedagogical kind of level. So I was starting with the early, the first developmental pedagogical obstacles. So it's, it's interesting because I, I do see perhaps that I need to try to um, recover the ground that sort of Keegan did with his Keegan stages of development that I'll probably try to craft something s similar to that. Um, but I also need to uh, learn more about you know, the different manifestations of different metatypes and, and different metagram circuitry and things like that. Um, There's a technical problem that I, s I still need to try to reverse engineer about Metagram, which is always bugging me. Um, it would be much easier to find if I could program things, but anyway. Um, I think I've said everything useful that's currently in my mind.